play Postal 3. This game attempted to break new ground by being co-developed by three separate studios and being absolute shit. When I made this comment, I had only played the tutorial mission of Postal 3. It was mostly made from opinions that were not my own. No one called me on it though. Mostly because I was absolutely fucking right. Let's just talk about the development of this game for a start. Running with scissors right up the script, do the character art, and they handle the voice acting side of the game. The actual development is then outsourced to Akella. 2007 rolls around, the economy takes a hit, Akella's A team goes and the B team takes the reins. They get massively overambitious and make a bit of a mess of the whole thing. The game is eventually released in 2011 despite numerous delays and Akella refusing to actually talk to Running with Scissors. RWS now makes no profit off of the game and has completely disowned the product. I played through the game with a couple of friends watching and recorded the whole thing. We ended up getting the bad ending, because Postal now has morality and a branching story path, and at the time we were more or less happy for it to just be over. I mean, we had to take week-long breaks between hour-long stints. It's just really bland third-person shooting, the weapons are unsatisfying, the enemies aren't fun to fight. You go from job to job and it's like, there's nothing coherent about it, anything, so you don't feel like you're actually doing any real progress. Deal harshly with gay bikers and Randy Jones. Oh, I can't wait! Harshly. That, uh, it's oh, my yeah. weekend all over again. New job awaits. There's still more! <laughs> it, despite saying I'd never come back, I didn't quite feel I was done. With me wanting to do a proper review and with Running With Scissors saying they've got something new to show at E3 this year, I decided to reinstall and get the good ending. You know, because I'm one for good decisions. So here are my experiences and my thoughts on the path to the best ending. The framing device is the dude explaining recent events to some off-screen bloke, recounting the events of Postal 2. By then, the neighborhood was lousy with sewer Taliban, and the mad cow Tourette zombie epidemic broke out. So me and Champ decided it was time to get out of town. And it begins directly after Apocalypse Weekend, with us taking the bridge out of the now-nuked paradise. Postal 2 took place in 2003 about, so by taking place right after it, I'm glad they've dated themselves. And hell, with jokes like this in the game, they've not only really dated themselves, they fucking outdated themselves. This bridge has a toll, the payment of which is one tutorial. Oh wait, I made that joke over a year ago. Well, if the dude's gonna recycle all of his lines, I can reuse a few here and there. Don't crowd, there's plenty for everyone. But you thought you weren't going to die today. Surprise! The gene pool is stagnant, and I am the Minister of Chlorine. This tutorial is mostly worthless. It teaches us how to take cover, which is buggy and for the most part can be ignored, how to throw grenades, which we're not going to use much. Besides, we can't even kick launch them anymore. Lastly, we learn how to use petrol to burn things, which I am never ever going to do because the physics of doing so are beyond fucked. Fire also doesn't spread now, and the AI is less receptive about being on fire. Then the tutorial gives us mace, and we kill some people from the UN. I'll give Postal 3 one concession, and that's that throwing grenades is actually a far sight better than Postal 2. In fact, throwing grenades is genuinely well done. It's still relatively useless thanks to one gun we'll learn about later on. We make it to the end of the bridge, and some commander bloke puts us in a room with the only funny joke in the game. Make sure nobody touches these bridge controls! Nobody! Got it, soldier? No problemo. We show our appreciation by killing everyone and heading off for Catharsis, where the bulk of the game will take place. Catharsis is a town that's so alive with activity that people in the background of some cutscenes don't even fucking move. There was no free roam at launch, and the free roam in the game is so completely lacking in anything to do beyond shoot completely tedious civilians that I didn't even bother with the free roam beyond the five minutes I recorded where I felt mostly dead inside. Our first taste of Catharsis is being a janitor in Ron Jeremy's sex shop, and we get our first post-tutorial weapon. It's a vacuum, capable of launching things at an incredible speed to absolutely no effect whatsoever. We've got to suck up a certain number of used tissues, so as to trigger an attack by hockey mums led by Sarah Palin. This game began production in 2007 about? Couldn't update the writing to keep it topical though, could they? 
Or maybe they tried, but Akela wasn't listening. I'll, I'll never know these things. Also, because I was vacuuming when the cutscene began, the sound keeps looping throughout. We now have to defend the shop with the vacuum. It encourages using charge shots for more accuracy, but it's so fucking wonky regardless, I just charge up to them and pelt them with weaponized wank rags. I mean, it's just as fiddly, but because I'm just firing off loads, at least I hit something. They vomit and leave, rinse and repeat until 20 or so of them have been chased off. It's just as unfun as it sounds. You also have to wait for them to spawn in, track them down, blast them, bugger off for more tissues and come back. We're 10 minutes in, and I'm already bored out of my fucking skull. I won't comment on the humour value of this scene, because there isn't any. Gross out humour is, for the most part, fucking worthless. We managed to clear out the shop. Unfortunately, those bitches scared all the customers away, so I can't pay you! But because there are no customers left, we can't be kept on the staff. His only payment being that we get to keep the vacuum. Uh, can I have free porn instead? Which I'm never going to use, because even as a joke weapon, it's fucking worthless. So, thanks for nothing, Ron. In return for this worthless piece of equipment, I'll in turn refuse to enjoy any of your further cameos throughout the game. Am I a psycho or not for wanting to use the mace like a flamethrower? It doesn't matter anyway, the game can't make its bloody mind up. You know what, Elf? The central plot of this game is that the postal dude is trying to afford petrol so he can leave town. Yeah, my car was out of gas. Unfortunately, due to the global economic meltdown. You remember the global economic meltdown? Gas was retarded expensive. What? Pedestrians don't drop cash anymore, and I can understand that story concession. But this. You see. Why are they spreading fucking gas cans through the levels like I'm actually ever going to use them for anything? Uh, well, maybe the dude just forgets that, that he could just easily use that fuel. <laughs> Actually, that's a good point. Well, yeah, you're right! <laughs> He's been getting these gas cans for the entire <laughs> game, and he doesn't think, Derp, oh. I'll just use these! Oh god, I'm so mad. Also, Blue is a very special man. You're damn right. <laughs> we both had a realization moment there. <laughs> yeah, the fucking... These are the moments that I live for, and then immediately oh. hate. When Goff pointed that out, I fucking had to reboot my mind, and then wonder how I didn't realize that. Petrol doesn't let a sequence break My to the man. end, though. A few seconds later, dude runs into a guy who needs you to capture HIV-infected cats. Now, it's a fetch quest in one of the free roamable areas, and we're given weaponized catnip, which you can use for slow-mo much like the previous game. But it only lasts for about 10 seconds, and it has this effect which hurts my eyes, so... I guess I'll just let it sit in my inventory. After this mission, slow-mo will be its only function, because fuck trying to actually hit cats with this. It's awkward and sometimes just doesn't work. Watch it. Ugh, smelly little beast. There's another one. Another awesome God, little guy. Animals. Animals. Doesn't anyone know those Hi. things care? And another one. And they want you to get 15 of them. I heard it'll cure glaucoma and hairballs. It's amazing how many cats this jacket can hold. Gotcha. Because they decided this wasn't already enough of a slog, they added the Mexi Sushi concern to hound you throughout the rest of the Collectathon. So now I have to worry about regenerating health, and this mission is slower than it already was. Actually, this does give me an opportunity for something. They only got so far making this area free roamable, but this house can be explored, so I get this gun they left lying around. Apply it to a guy with an M16, and voila! I now need no other gun in the entire fucking game. Seriously, you should never use anything other than the M16. All the weapons in this game are weak, finicky, and inaccurate. The M16 is accurate, decently powerful, and near enough everyone uses it, so ammo is plentiful. I mean, combat in this game is the blandest of bland. Both you and the enemies are pretty tough. The cover system is bare bones at best and broken at worst, so I just run around headshotting everyone. Their AI isn't quite sprightly enough to make them hard targets, and the M16 strays the least from the crosshair, so why use anything else? The pistol is weak and unsatisfying. The shotgun too, sadly, is weak and unsatisfying. The heavy machine gun is just awkward due to its kick. Plus I'm pretty certain that even that is weaker than the M16. The melee hit detection is so bad that I'm pretty certain the postal dude couldn't hit the broadside of a barn with his bare hands. 
There's a fair few melee weapons on offer, but none of them have better chances of hitting than any other, and they can be pretty pathetic even when they do land hits. Petrol? Well, look at this clip. If I weren't meant to play with fire, why God make it so damn fun? Yeah, isn't happening. I'm never in a situation where I need area denial weapons anyway, so we can forget petrol for both gameplay and story purposes. You can also throw cats at people. Or lay them down for the returning dervish cats. But honestly, they just aren't fun to use, there's no impact to the combat, none of the weapons are satisfying. Late game we do get a rocket launcher and it's just required for the final boss. But it doesn't have the same feeling of power that it had in Postal 2. Let me say this for a second. The weapons in Postal 2 were far from perfect, but none of them felt truly awful to use. Except for the club. They each had their place, and I would switch what I was using based on what was happening. The M16 was weak but it had a high rate of fire, and it was decent for crowds of enemies. The shotgun could one hit kill but you had to close the gap. The pistol had decent damage and great accuracy, but it had a long time between shots. Also, no more throwing scissors, no more diseased cowhead, no more hunting rifle, or napalm launcher. Postal 3 not only has less weapon variety, but less weapon viability. The one gimmick weapon you get in the good run, the badger saw, is, much like any other melee weapon, an awkward mess, which I used once and then discarded because, well, the M16 will see me to the end of the game much faster. Let's compare it to another game for the sake of fun. Let's compare it to a game... another game made on the Source engine, so, you know, it's a bit more fair. Fistful of Frags. If you think comparing a game made by a full-fledged game studio to a mod in early development made by a team of seven people is unfair, you're absolutely right. It's unfair to compare Postal 3 to a good game. Every weapon in Fistful has its place, from the basic revolver, to a bow and arrow, to a hatchet with great melee hit detection. The shotgun in this game isn't a weak, unsatisfying little bugger, it's a fun force to be reckoned with. There's rifles and sawn-off shotguns, and sawn-off rifles, throwing knives, dynamite. Each of them are more fun to use than anything Postal 3 offers. Am I forgetting something? Oh yes, kicking! Kicking is a serious downgrade from Postal 2. Now it locks you in place and it's awkward to aim. And you can't get grenades anymore, like I said. It does knock people down now, but there's no visceral feeling to it. They just limply ragdoll over. It's quicker just to shoot them in the head and move on. Postal 2 at least had a meaty sound effect. As for kicking doors, well, there aren't really any doors that need kicking. Except in one case where a door that shouldn't be able to be opened can be kicked to access the rest of the level early. Actually, I wonder, does Fistful have kicking? Oh yes it does, and it's goddamn glorious. It has more punch than Postal 3, it's balanced so as to both be viable in its own way, act as a desperation attack, and as a counter to melee attackers. What I'm basically saying is, Fistful of Frags is really fucking good. Uh, back to collecting cats, I suppose. I, for the most part, just try and live and let live, ignore the Mexi Sushi guys and just pick up more cats. I just care for quota filling, really. Unfortunately, our employer is arrested, so we can have another wacky offshoot. We run into the mayor, who's also played by Ron Jeremy. But then, because this game feels like sidetracking directly after sidetracking, Vince gives us a ring and tells us Jennifer Walcott needs security, so we go there instead. Deciding that having a Sarah Palin model in the game once wasn't enough, the hockey mums were dropped into another scene where we have to deal with them non-lethally. Your very existence is an affront to womanhood, you silicone and Is there a problem, Ms. Walker? Plague! I Let's smoke these bitches. Non-lethally, of course. I mean, we're on the good run here. It's exactly the same as the pawn shop bit, but we're given a stun gun. It's kind of like the taser from Postal 2, but now it's a ranged physics weapon with a travel time, so hitting with it at times can feel like playing catch with your weak arm, whilst it's on fire, and the ball is actually balled up paper, in a blizzard. 
If you do break out a deadly weapon, the cops come in. But the scene is still quicker if they do bust in, because you don't have to slowly tase people, and can instead bust out the M16. But we're going for the good ending, so I tase away. Actually, this scene doesn't really matter. Killing or no killing, everyone leaves and there's no real well, payment to be had. Fun. Unfortunately, all the customers got scared off, so I can't afford to pay you. Go ahead and keep the taser and the shovel as a token of my appreciation, okay? Well, except for a shovel. It leads to the dude heading off to get a payday loan, and he doesn't even try and sell off the shovel he gets for gas money. Unfortunately, there's more than one hate group knocking about in this town as well, and a shootout between the police and another boring group called the Ecotologists happened. I knew I needed to make a story-altering choice, and fast. Police it is then. So this is our first branching moment, and the police are more than happy to let a man with a gun jammed up a cat's ass help them. So we do another kill em all mission. Well, this time we can actually kill them though, with no consequence, so... We get to see the badger saw they teased in the previews, and we get a more personal preview of how useless it is when compared to the M16. It's at this point that we get a completely out of nowhere cutscene and an out of nowhere mechanic. Morality is now dropped into this game in this unfunny cutaway of a cutscene. All you need to remember is lethal force pulls the meter toad insane. Non lethal force pulls the meter toad's good. If you complete a mission at 100% good, you get a story out to injust to me. What do I get for 100% uh, insane, yo? Eh, uh, nothing. That sucks. You know, I didn't care for the humor in Postal 2 either. But do you know why it wasn't an issue? Vince needs to see you, dude. Thanks. Because look, it's on a poster I can ignore. Postal 3 lasers its cutscenes with its attempts at gags, so now I can't ignore it as easily as it's proudly on display. Surprisingly, the girl cops are not all dykes. Just mostly. My crotch is tall, salad, and poem. It's hair delicious for the whole family. It keeps your bowels regular. Free cucumbers for the ladies. Interesting. There's definitely something I like about it, but I can't put my finger in it. Also, the number of dude lines that have the configuration, I blame X, is kind of staggering. I blame Glenn Beck. I blame Pac Man. I blame Christian Mel. I blame the lamestream media. Also, that other media. Someone thought they were a funny thing that could be a catchphrase, and someone was wrong. Some of dude's in cutscene dialogue did admittedly get a smile out of me. Yo, Cracker Bear, you look like you need a payday loan, motherfucker. So give me your money, fool, and have a nice motherfucking day. Uh, you do realize I'm a cop, right? Uh, but it was few and far between. It was mostly his kind of deadpan lines that were very rare. Anyway, back to what little story there is. Due to our prowess when it comes to mass murder, we're accepted into the Catharsis police force. This unlocks the ability to arrest people by stunning them and hitting the use key on the poor buggers. It's only required in a couple of places in the game, and it's an instant kill. Do you know what else is an instant kill? Headshots. They brought in some dummy homeless people to practice my arrests on. Then an army of homeless people hit the police station and arresting is no longer necessary because we're allowed to shoot these ones. This time it's an escort mission. We have to get Douchebag to the Chief's office to save the day. That's his name. It's funny because Douchebag is a thing that people say, and his name is unfortunately Douchebag, which is unfortunate. The joke doesn't really go any further than this. I mean, I'm not expecting it to be clear. Anyway, the game has been going on for about an hour now. We've had a worthless tutorial, three kill em all missions, two where it wasn't actually killing but functionally was the same, a fetch quest and now an escort mission. Here's a tip. If you can't come up with an interesting hook for these types of objectives, or a unique objective at all, just do straight A to B missions. They're more enjoyable and to the point than these tedious mission types, which only really serve to artificially lengthen a game. I mean, this is the start of the game. This is where your creativity should be at a high. I've only just started playing and I already feel like stopping. Which I did, I mean it took me multiple weeks to record this review because I took breaks. This game is just that mind-numbing, really. Uh, well, I guess my first time beating this game was also played an hour-long stints for a reason. Anyway, since this is an escort mission, and because most missions do give us friendly AI, we may as well talk about how useless they are. The friendly AI is useless. I'm pretty certain that they're not actually capable of killing enemies, only looking like they do stuff to make scenes seem more alive, but it doesn't really fucking work. The enemies for the most part prioritize you anyway. Here's the thing though, 
Here's a little fly in the ointment. Killing a cop instantly takes away all of your good morality. The only real purpose they serve from my perspective is to slow me down and make gunfights awkward. Yeah, think about that for a second. In Postal 3, you have to be worried about collateral damage. Not to mention, sprinting into stuff knocks it down. Which counts as an attack apparently, because it turns out friendly AI is capable of killing things. Namely, me. Also, no checkpoints, I just got sent right back to the beginning of the stage. So, yeah. I have to pussyfoot around my allies because I'm more scared of them than I am my enemies. The sequel to Postal 2, which if nothing else was a bloody brilliant stress ball, asks you to play cautiously. Not to mention you have to do these extra objectives, which the game knowingly calls optional fun, if you want that good ending. Also the escort AI is pathetic, which is a mixed blessing actually. Because if I just leave douchebag alone he just stays put, and I can go and clear the rest of the way, I do then have to backtrack all the way across the stage to get to him, because the end level flag is based on him. But still, at least that means I don't have to worry about him dying. Oh wait, this door is now glitched and won't open. I guess the police locked me out for running into them. Please excuse me whilst I have a mental breakdown. Postal 3 is probably one of the most boring video games I've ever seen. Actually sat down and watched. Now. Reason is because the whole game feels so lackluster. It's like, sure, I've only watched it. I have to actually sat down and play it. So I can't really say maybe it's actually better than what I make it out to be. I don't know. But it still felt boring to look at because nothing in it happens. There's nothing that happens. There's nothing fun about it to look at. Like in Puzzle 2. Do you have stuff like NPCs going nuts because it, they're admittedly kind of poorly coded, but it's more fun to watch than it's really dull NPCs that really doesn't do anything. And Puzzle 2 had so much more flavor to it. It's like really cool, kind of weird weapons that just made it more fun. Puzzle 2 has, Puzzle 3 even, has quote weird weapons, but they're very bo bog standard, boring kind of weird. If, if my point gets across here. It's just very boring to actually watch or and the jokes and everything, every character is, everything feels so dull even though it really shouldn't consider any content but it just uh, boring. That's probably the worst thing about it. I, I'm, not, I'm not feeling really uh, any anger towards it because honestly I'm not that big of a postal fan. It's just it's too boring for me to actually give a fuck because it's like in... I almost fell as honestly fell asleep watching it because it was nothing that I visually interesting to actually latch on to. There's nothing interesting happening. Yeah, that's at least what I think about Postal 3. I managed to shepherd douchebag through the dead homeless people. It turns out the chief isn't in, amusingly, and how wacky is this? In Mexico. Not amusingly, the lieutenant was furious about all the friendly fire and threw me off the force. My police career ended before it even began. Then we kicked off the force for friendly fire? So there I was, my first day of serving and protecting. Yep, I was the law. <laughs> what? You knew I was gonna say it. Oh, it must have been a giant misunderstanding. Perhaps Douchebag does live up to his name. Or perhaps the game is just shite. I don't really care. This patrol mission actually isn't so bad. Or maybe that row of completely tedious mission types is just lowering my standards. We're dropped into a free roamable area of catharsis, and our objectives tell us to check these spots. And considering how this is a bland as shit town with nothing stand out and there's no map function, I'll just blindly wander until I stumble on these objectives. Really, it's superficial, but this type of mission is actually kind of fun, even though the gameplay hasn't really changed much at all. Postal Dude as a cop actually kind of works. Hey, I'm the only one who gets to do that. It's a shame this will only appear twice throughout the whole game. And while I'm being positive, I'll say the only other thing I like about this game is the user interface. It's theme appropriate and unintrusive. Not to mention the weapon selector tells you what key every weapon is bound to, even if you change your bindings. 
The weapon drawings are also vaguely charming. So we knock about town, arresting people for public indecency and shoplifting. Well, I also like the police music. You go, girl. Or at least I used to. And then an objective gotcha. broke and I was stuck in a hell comprised of hopelessness and electronic music. If you play this shit, save often, because it's unstable. It seems that even when a good thing does come along, Postal Free locks up just to remind you who's in charge. <laughs> a few random arrests later, and Postal Free immediately reminds you just how unfun it can be. A random, lol so crazy terrorist attack, and an ensuing kill em all mission. You know, I never realised just how much I hate kill em all missions. But this one is worse than the previous, because the number you have to kill is sizable, and you have to fucking search them out around the town area. To add insult to injury, this Al Qaeda attack is immediately followed by an appearance by Ubol. In the name that's all that's good and holy, you will stop making shitty movies! Die, Ubol! Die! So immediately, e fucking immediately, after a kill em all mission, there is a taser all mission. Because angry movie nerds turn up and want Ood yeah, dead. I, never found myself in I mean, I know he's like got the back movie back rights of the Postal franchise, day. but you don't have to bring it, and by extension, him up. Calling the movie nerds arrogant as well is a little bit unfair. I mean, you don't have to be arrogant to see that the Postal movie was awful, both on its own and as an adaptation. And I don't wish you bold death. He has to be present while his films are being made, and that's pretty much punishment enough. Anyway, another problem. The nerds are programmed to bull rush Ooh Bowl so that you can easily take them down. And to add an extra dimension to this mission. It's still boring even with that dimension. But sometimes they just spawn and don't do anything. I need to get all of them to progress. So it's always great when I have to comb through the level afterwards because your shitty little ticks of failed AI don't function right. And when I do eventually find them, I can arrest and move on. Then we find ourselves in a shootout outside an arcade. Screw you, noob! I got badass skills! Yeah, I own! I'm so sorry you had to say that. And since Jennifer Walcott is going in there, we're going to follow her into another kill em all mission. But this time it has more civilians wandering around to make shit awkward. Plus, we can't let Jen die. It also means we get hilarious video game jokes like Ukulele Hero, Postal Arcade, and. Just go and write for racism then. You're making Super Mario cry. Sorry, don't you mean Super Guido Brothers? Can you even stay internally consistent? I guess another note is that the movie nerds are also in this mission, but they don't count towards completion. Only Hockeymons do. was that? Let's complain at length about another thing. How about sound this time? The music is hit and miss, some tracks are semi-decent, and then there's shit like this. All the music is also looped, but not properly. Balancing the goddamn audio so that you can actually hear the dude's lines is a bit of a fine line as well. Do you want to know why? Because the cutscene and music volume is tied to the same fucking audio slider. You also have other joyous things, like the weapon noises being completely fucking pathetic. Only the M16 sounds fucking powerful, which I guess is true to the game. Still disappointing though. Also, sometimes the weapon noises just don't play. Which, uh, is more or less unfortunate. The amount of dude lines that are just recycled from Postal 2. Granted that dude is now played by a new guy, and he does a fair job with what he's got. Uh, another thing, the amount of civilians speaking at once in some scenes can get downright cacophonous. It's an assault on the ears when there's too many NPCs going on at once. So, do you think video games are evil? I think I need me some malt liquor. You're not really being too helpful here. Whatever, I'm out of here. think you're doing? Fine, thanks. Oh! Alongside this, cutscenes also have pretty bad cutoffs at times. It's like the game is trying to interrupt its own punchlines. Yeah, that guy hardly looks suspicious at all. And then we have this. Let's take down the last hockey mom. Ah! 
That happens repeatedly throughout the game, apropos of nothing. I'm not entirely certain why. I'm gonna guess it's trying to be annoying on purpose. I mean, it's the loudest sound in the game. Loud enough that it's bloody losing quality. Anyway, a Russian guy offers us something that doesn't go anywhere and never comes up again, so we go to Mexico, because Al-Qaeda has decided that if there's gonna be another Kill 'em All mission, it may as well be somewhere different. Jesus fucking Christ. This mission isn't so bad. They spawn more than you're required to kill for once. And the enemies charge towards you. Their objective is to break through to America, and unlike the cutscene, they can't jump the fence. They try and run the toll booth. So I can just rest easy and shoot them as they single file line through the gate. Or I can die because of shit even cover mechanics. Our morality goes down if even one gets in, so we gotta perfect this shit for the best ending. Oh, only one left. Never mind, game's fucked again. Now to take it from the top. Uh, you know what? I'll just say this was two kill em all missions in one so I can hold it against the game easier. Anyway, I killed them all, so what's next? It looked like I had a small Mexican town to liberate. Another kill em all mission right after the kill em all mission? Postal 3, you spoil me. But this time I have to go into that town and actively seek them out so it's even more of a chore than it already was. Also, wasn't Al Qaeda already in America earlier on? Oh, who cares? I do love that I have to walk through this town in circles to trigger enemy respawns so I can fulfill the quota of killed enemies so that I can see another uninteresting attempted grindhouse style cutscene so that I can have another killer more mission except this time it's monkeys and cats who have awkward as fuck hitboxes so that for once the heavy machine gun and shotgun are actually kind of useful because of how fucking awkward their aims are. Ooh, what a sentence. Hey, let's look behind that shutter. Cheers. It leads to a boss. Well, at least a boss breaks the tide of constant kill em all missions. Oh, it's a bullfight boss. You know, I don't care for bullfight bosses in well-made games. In this game, with awful AI, slow character movement and general tedium, I dislike it even more than I typically do. It's not hard, just slow and monotonous. This meth-crazed rhino is also a boss in the bad run. I guess at least in this run I get out of the way sooner. So I slowly and repeatedly careen the rhino into stuff. After that happens, Dude walks into a Payday Loans joke. The joke doesn't really go anywhere, then Champ starts clipping through a guy and they leave. Thanks for the reminder. Well, that two minutes worth of cutscene added nothing. Dude, surprised that he's still on the force, heads into a shittier neighborhood for a laugh, and for the other patrol mission in the game. Oh, I'm sorry, now you're recycling mission types? Didn't notice. Did all those kill em all missions not fucking count? Yeah, I can see that. Well, it's not wrong. It is just the same as last time. Wander around this free roam environment, rooting out crime, arresting criminals, and then leaving the money bags on them. Hey dude, take it for yourself and leave. Call it the non-committal ending. I'll take it. What the hell? Snipers. I fucking hate snipers. It's worse than that, dude. They have M16s. Because there are no snipers in this game. Aside from that, this patrol is more arresting, more killing monkeys. The game has added nothing new for about two hours now. Finding unique forts to catalogue is getting difficult, so I'm gonna leave for a minute. Though Soto had a sense of unique charm not many other games had, this is a company that freely advertised it was offensive piece of shit with pacing and extra review right on the box cover. You have to give the team credit for running with a joke, their pet project became their beloved child to them, something they looked with care and attention towards. Whenever someone would send a bad review along their direction, they would wear that title and play along with the fact not everyone would like their product. True, some jokes fell flat within the game, but you have to admire the randomness of the open world and the beauty of the locals within their madness. This is where it falls very flat with Postal 3. Very, very flat. I couldn't say what really went into development, whether these three teams had different colliding ideas bouncing off each other, the long hiatus in development time. All I can say is, it's a piece of shit. And it doesn't even make it a fun piece of shit, something you know is bad to enjoy with others. Nope, it's just utter shit. It's such a shame as well, because the company doesn't seem like a bad bunch, and if anything, with whatever their next project would be, I would want to see it to the end. 
I truly feel the team can, with time and attention, present something to the table with curious eyes. Because that's what they're best at, really. Drawing in attention. But in a good way. But who knows, really. Another big issue with a game of this type is, appropriately enough considering the town's name, the catharsis factor. Earlier on I said Postal 2 is a great stress ball, and that comes from two things. Fun weapons and functional AI. Well, we already know Postal 3 lacks the weapons. And the AI doesn't really make up the difference. They're simply too idiotic and shallow to be interesting to take out stress on. Postal 2 civilians at the least put on a show, and the cops would actually come along so that you could actually get something out of it. Killing Postal 3 civilians is just punching air, there's nothing in it. Enemy AI is such a non-threat that when it's not en masse there's no real merit in beating them either. The lack of weapon punch and the lack of mostly appropriate reaction just means there's no satisfaction in the whole ordeal. So in Postal 3, I don't even give a shit about going postal. Anyway, there's another kill em all mission, but this one is small, only 9 people. And in a restaurant. And you know what the perfect palate cleanser is after a kill em all mission? How about a full length one? And a model change? Because Postal Dude got roped into SWAT for this one. I don't know if this suit actually lessens damage taken, but I doubt it, c it does. Because that would show some effort. In the evil storyline you get a crotchy Are suit, and that has the hidden ability to get you stuck in guys, walls all the fucking time. The Part of me doubts that was intentional though. Oh God, I think this time we're raiding the ecotologist camp trying to arrest their leader. This is for my money the worst- Hang on a second. Meow. Oh for fuck's sake, I forgot about this when writing the review. The worst take on Eye of the Tiger. And it's on loop. Throughout the worst of the worst kill em all missions in this game. Why is it so bad? Well, you see, there are less people spawned on the map than you need to kill. So, I've got to run laps around this rather large map, hoping spawns trigger so that I can actually finish up, and boy do they take their time about it. Why is it always the levels with the awful music that drag on in this way? I don't even listen to the original I have the tiger on repeat, and this rendition is retroactively worsening every time I have listened to it. Anyway, when they finally all die, Al appears on the map, and he's the ecotologist leader in case you didn't know. You probably didn't know. I didn't know, and I was playing the game and capitalizing on the AI's poor aim. I just charge at him from across the entire map. Cheers for setting up this gunfight for me, but I'm beyond appreciating things. I blame Glenn Beck. With Al arrested, we get a good handshake from Douchebag, and given the task of security for... For the... Alternative Lifestyle Rodeo. Ah, shit. This was in the bad run as well. Do you know what this means? It means we have a recycled boss fight too! Yep, Ecotologist attack, and we have another bullfight boss. It's different this time, because we have a different player model, and there's a gay cowboy on the rhino. Hilarity. This is my least favourite music in the game by the way. And it's in a two-stage bullfight boss on a loop. Doesn't help the loop is 55 seconds long. Ain't it wacky and out there lads? So. By repeatedly coating the poor dying AI into walls, we save Randy Jones, brackets, the gay cowboy, end brackets, and Ron Jeremy gets us into the Secret Service. The Secret Service do escort missions whilst mounted on segways. Sorry, fegways in this game. It's a joke you see on, on, on the lisps. So now we have to escort the mayor across three stages of the town of Catharsis, with tank controls and constant enemies, and whilst on the Segway, we're locked to the pistol, the taser, and our fists. So I did what I always do in this situation. I just ride it out. Because luckily for me, the escort drives faster than he dies. And in a show of goodwill, he regenerates health. So, this section was unfun, but it was for the most part inoffensive. Hey, here's a fun thought. My script at this point is probably longer than Design Doc for this game. Anyway, we've been escorting the mayor across town to take him to Dave Land where some semblance of a plot happens. Uncle Dave has completely changed appearance from Postal 2. He's also suddenly in this game. Ron Jeremy's career is ruined by a sex tape of all things, and Osama is in on this shit because why not? So, Osama is in cahoots with the mayor. Nice job, Osama. Very convincing. 
A little yeah, that was real convincing. I mean, shooting me with real bullets and all. Fuck, I myself was convinced. Then the three of them team up and are now the antagonists. Then Hockey Moms attack and the dude teams up with Jennifer Walcott and a ragtag crew of gay cowboys. Also, the info text dump doesn't actually fit the screen. Also, there's apparently some uranium involved, but it's actually piss. We never talked about pissing, did we? It's still in the game, it's just kind of worthless now. Anyway, we chase the three bad guys across Daveland. It's a straight A to B mission. It shouldn't be really that refreshing, but it kind of is. It doesn't exactly energize me and fill me with the power I need to finish the game, because it's a video game, and it isn't really in need of that much drama. I'd like to point out that if you're on the bad route, the game ends when you catch up, ending with a dude getting sent to hell to suffer for all eternity. If you're going for the best ending, however, it's much more dire than that. The game keeps going on. We have a boss fight with our three antagonists. They're like normal enemies, but they have more health, so I spend more time shooting them than usual, and then they die. Well, with Uncle Dave, Osama, and the mayor taken care of, there was no reason for me to stick around. Fuck you! What reason has there been to stick around from the very beginning? And also, epic win? Fuck you! Then Hugo Chavez and the Venezuelan army turns up. Isn't it great when your impromptu game extension isn't even related to Jack's shit? Uh, who am I kidding? Nothing's been related to anything so far. At least we don't have to kill the entire Venezuelan army, because honestly I wouldn't have put it past them at this point. In fact, the game gives us a rocket launcher and just tells us to fucking leave town. Which I am more than happy to. It tells us to get to our car. Wait, did we ever get gas? Did we even- did we ever even get paid? Oh, fuck it, why poke holes in a plot when the plot is barely five minutes old? So, yep, it's another A to B mission just after the last one. Just going across town stages we've already seen, but this time they're ruined, or at least more so than usual. And filled with the UN and Venezuelan army duking it out. Plus, the Venezuelan army prioritize you, and they're in huge numbers, and cover isn't always readily available. So I died. And I died. Then, a holdover. A memory from the beginning of the game, and from Postal 2 hit me. I began to huff catnip, and I ran, and I ran, and I escaped them. Catnip saved me. I outran the army, and ran straight into Hugo fucking Chavez. But then I just stood out of his range, flung rockets at him for a couple of minutes, pissed on his corpse. Postal dude gets elected president, bloody bloody blah, blah, I don't even care. Yeah, in the good run I murder way more people than in the evil run, thanks to all those fucking kill em all missions. But Dude Mania sweeps the country and he gets elected prez anyway. He goes on to hit another big red button, then the credits roll. And I see a guy with a job of multiplayer designer in there. And I sigh sadly to myself and hope he got paid fairly. So... that's that, I suppose. Postal 3 is a third-person shooter with an irreverent sense of humour and it wants to be brutal and over the top. It relies primarily on its writing and its gunplay, and it completely, and without a shadow of a doubt, fucking fails. The story feels like an attempt to be a more focused Postal 2, but without the free roam to bind it all together, and a morality meter and branching path connected with it, it just comes across as a disjointed, unfunny, confused mess. This, to me, is worse than Ride to Hell. Ride to Hell may have also been a complete mess, but it was a complete mess with spirit. It was a complete mess that thought it was going to be great. And that is far more entertaining than a piece of shit that tries to be funny, fails at it, and then doesn't even aspire beyond that. Running with Scissors have thankfully taken a lesson from this, and have promised their next production will all be in-house, and unrelated to the postal IP. I'm glad for that. I'm looking forward to seeing what else they can do. Also, the credits end with that goddamn scream. Because, you know, it just can't leave well enough alone. It isn't a streamlined sequel, rolling in regenerating health, removing extra items, and making the combat simpler for sake of straightforwardness. It's a straight downgrade. 
None of the good parts of Postal 2 are present in any form. There is nothing that makes this game enjoyable. Even its good points are only good relative to how tedious most of the game actually is. For how shitty the combat is, the good run really makes you experience a fucking lot of it. And you know what? At the end of it all, kill all missions, I guess, aren't too big of a problem. I mean, I fucking love killing floor, and that is nothing but killing, but at least I know that's what I'm going in for. In this game, it just feels like it's extending something that isn't even there. It's not fun to begin with, and then it keeps fucking happening. This game was a waste of notebook pages. My awful handwriting can never be understood.